Good evening, everyone. This is the Hingham Historic Districts Commission meeting for December 14th. Thank you all for coming. Uh, first up on the agenda is uh, Heidi Condon with um, a continuation from, I believe this was October when you were in last on with the, with the, the Joneses uh, pool house. And we have some, some copies that were distributed here um, tonight with uh, maybe some minor modification. Yeah, okay. Which I'll go okay. All right. So if you want to take it away, thank you. So, thank you for being here this evening. I'm Heidi Condon. I'm here with Julie Jones, homeowner, this evening. Um, just to recap, uh, the original garage was, we believe, was built in 1920s, 1940s as a garage. Um, a few years ago, we presented our master plan for this property. We got approval for a new garage closer to Clark Street so we could create a courtyard, get rid of the driveway that split this property and get some privacy for the Jones. This was part of our master plan. At that point, we were focusing on the main house as well as the new garage. We were restoring that house. Those were our priorities. Now we are here to talk about this building. It um, has changed its function yet again. While it was originally a garage, then it became a storage area and a pool um, equipment space. Now we'd like it to become a family gathering and entertainment space. Um, we have been here you know, a few times with the board talking about what's historically appropriate um, for this location. Um, we originally presented a larger dormer with a cupola. So through our reiterations working with the board, we've removed the cupola. We've lowered the gable 12 inches now below the ridge. It's just the one gable that's facing the main house. And we are now copying the original triangular um, window. You can see on the upper right, that is the window that's there now. If you look at this picture, that's the window. So we will be removing the, the flagpole, restoring that window. What we are proposing is a smaller dormer on the side above where there are originally those garage doors. So that's what you can see here on the left. And because of the, um, the way this site is, you really can't see anything below that gutter line. But we have proposed a, um, a trellis. Originally, we proposed it to be Intex. We have now proposed that it be wood. And then those nano wall doors are also wood. Even though they can't be seen, um, we are proposing wood. So we are matching the, the main house for the materials. We are matching the shingled roof for the materials and we are just asking for the simple dormer which is something that we feel is historically appropriate for accessory buildings so right here that shows the the window that we're copying as you can see this building now is completely surrounded by lawn which is wonderful for the joneses they now reclaim their yard and they'd like to use it for their family with a with a terrace and a pool house so this I took from their driveway off Clark Street. So as you can see, all you can see is the gutter line and that window, and that will remain. This is what it looks like now. This faces the main house. And so where the basketball court is is where we're proposing the smaller dormer. This is the side view. This is, if, if I'm walking towards Main Street, this is the corner of this building that you can see. As I move farther away, straight on, I can't see it. As I move down Main Street, now you can start to see it over the fence, and you can see it here. So you will see part of this new dormer. So this shows our new garage that we got full approval from the board um, in keeping with the neighborhood as well as in keeping with the federal style. And again, you can see the triangular window, so that will stay. This is just another view of it. Again, you cannot see anything past the, um, the gutter line. And then in just, in our minds, we did quite a bit of research walking around um, Main Street, Lincoln Street, Middle Street area, looking at historic homes. Historically appropriate home accessory buildings in this neighborhood all have either dormers or, or many don't, but it seems half and half. So in our own research, we feel that what we're proposing is historically appropriate and it's even smaller than many of these gables. So here's one on Main Street, 
Here's another one on Main Street. This is a lower building similar to ours, and it has a, a, what's called a hip dormer. This is also on Main Street, a gable dormer. That's in very similar proportion to ours. This is another hip, another gable, another gable. And this is an accessory building in a historic neighborhood over on Middle Street. So in our minds, we are here asking the board to accept what, what we have done after several reiterations. And we're really looking to do very similar details that are historic examples within the neighborhood. And literally, this will show, this shows kind of the screening and the planting, all that you'll see. So two sides, one side really doesn't change, the side from Clark Street, all you'll see is the dormer. And then you'll see portions of our new dormer facing um, Main Street. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. We've made several changes working with the board. We're keeping all the materials matching the existing, um, which were approved when we first went with our master plan. And we're just asking for a simple dormer on an accessory building, which we feel is historically appropriate. You're welcome. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to note, and I apologize Sorry. for not having Julia, been here. You're going to have to talk into the microphone. One of, I'd be happy to. Um, since I haven't been able uh, to be at the prior meetings, and I apologize that my travel schedule conflicted with that, that you know, my sense of you know, what your mission is, is to protect the, you protect the historical heritage of this town. And, and so do our neighbors. Um, we all care about the same thing. We share that mission, and Mark and I do, and we cherish this home. 240 Main Street is a special, iconic home in Hingham, and I think we've taken that duty quite seriously in terms of how we have protected the home and the renovations that we made. I think, as you know, we were trying to position this house for the next 150 years. I mean, we replaced every system in the home, and we didn't do it by taking down the entire the house. We built the house to try to protect the internal accuracy of the home as best we could and the exterior. So I just wanted you to have a sense of how we cherish this home and that we think this standard is a style decision within the standards of historical accuracy. And do I hate it that my neighbors don't like it? I do. I like my neighbors a lot. They're wonderful people. And so us having a disagreement on what the style is, I feel bad about. You guys cherish your home too. We do too. And they're wonderful neighbors. Um, but I do think it's a style decision. And I think it's one that maybe we would disagree about in 1832 because we could have built the structure with a dormer then. So that's my sense. So I just wanted to share those views and make sure you know how seriously Mark and I take the home of James Stevenson and his wife Abigail and the six kids. We know the story of 240 Maine. And we love it and cherish it and always will. So thank you. Any questions? Sorry. <laughs> yes, um, I would just reiterate the I'm sorry, comments. Nicole, could you just say your name and address? Oh, sure. Correctly. Sorry. Nicole Rafelson, 244 Main Street. Um, I guess I would just sort of re reiterate the comments I made last time, and I appreciate that. Um, Heidi has taken a lot of pictures. Those are of garages, and the Joneses already have a garage on their property that has a dormer, and I would point out that this is another building, um, and that, you know, I can, I can pull up my comments from before and read them again, but basically it's excessive ornamentali ornamentalization, if that's a word, um, for a property that's three quarters of an acre. And the dormer will be visible between our two homes. And that was a comment I made last time that it interferes in the historic conversation between 240 and 244 Main. Um, so if you want me to repeat all my comments, but I think you know them. So thank you. OK, thanks for coming in, Nicole. Any, uh, any, anyone else? OK, uh, discussion? Uh, we've all been out to see the uh, the site, Jason. I know you you weren't out you weren't out there at the time. So, um, but um, any comments from the uh, from the commission at this point? I have more <clears throat> question. I know we have this drawing. And this drawing is different from that yes. in terms of. Uh, from the same. This elevation is different. Oh well, this one I just showed the screen. It's the, it's the same as the very first. This one I
and I'm just showing what you can see from the street. But the first, that drawing that you have, is the first one I showed. This one at the top. Now this one's different. See, look, it's got that roof line on that one continues and the dormer's pushed back, whereas this one pushes up the facade. Right, see there's that E oh, line goes across. This, this is our old drawing. This is the one. Sorry, this is what we have proposed last. I don't know which one. This is this is it. This one is what I what we just proposed. Okay, because they're both dated December fourteenth. I think my assistant okay. had this. This is what we proposed last time. I'm sorry. This is what we proposed last time. This is what we're proposing now. Okay. So this shows the the dormer lower here. She just gave me a bunch of drawings. I didn't realize they were all different. Okay. This is the one, and this is the large one, and it should be the one that you received. But this is what we proposed last time. So you can see we've lowered the dormer. We've simplified, but we've replicated the window. So this is the existing window. So this is what you should have gotten in your package this, this week. So, sorry, this is that. But that was what we proposed last time. I okay. think she just missed, she was just marking everything she wanted me to bring tonight. The um, the purpose of the of the dormer is uh, is what? How how important it is is it for well, the? It's um, no longer a garage. It's no longer a storage. Mm -hmm. um, we want it to be a family entertainment space that they can use for for outdoor as well as indoor living, and we wanted it for natural light. We're taking down in, inside. There's currently a loft for storage, which we're taking down. And we just want to expose the actual roof line and add some some natural light. And we have dormers on the other two buildings. And we feel in, in speaking architecturally to the buildings on this properly, property, it is appropriate. So the function of this building is changing. So we feel like the form is changing, that this is a historically appropriate dormer replicating the existing gable. And that's um, it's kind of northwest fa facing. Is it north facing? Um, northwest. I'm the last person you should ask. I think it's <laughs> northwest, right? Uh, yeah. I think it's I'm just um, I'm wondering how much natural light's going to come in there. You know, with that. I mean, we d we're not looking for bright light. It's not a <coughs> studio, yeah. but we're just looking for yeah. having the three sides, the rear is still a pool equipment and yep. there is no light from the, the back elevation because yep. there's storage still. Is, is it a headroom concern at all for you? Is no. it what concern? A headroom head concern? Um, well, I think that we're trying to get open space in the, in the gallery and helps with that. Um, and because as Heidi noted, it, it faces buildings that have a very similar, um, a very similar dormer and so it kind of ties, the, it ties it together in a way that I think creates that a courtyard feeling so um, it was against that backdrop but certainly that um, you know we didn't think it was incongruous with the standards of you know, historical um, accuracy and architectural detail too so okay any, any other comments Ben Tomas no I'm I'm happy that the, uh, the dormer was uh, was shrunk down um, and um, and the cupola was was taken off, so as it sits right here, um, I would definitely be in favor of it. I think the modifications that you've made um, significantly increase its, or decrease its, its standing out. Um, That's our goal. It, we really wanted to speak to the other buildings on the property and, and be a welcoming building that wasn't all roof facing the main house. Now those, uh, those are all windows. Those are, are glass doors underneath. They're called yeah. nano walls. Um, right. So light comes in through there as well, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, pergola, the trestles, all wood. Yes. No fiberglass there. Okay. Like. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> I, 
it, aside of the dormer, I would I would support this. I still feel um, that the dormer, even though this is an accessory building, that the dormer adds more prominence to that structure. Um, and I think you know it's existing, non-conforming. It, it is what it is. Um, I, I think the structure itself is probably a little big for that property, but it's there, and you know we're certainly allowed to uh, make the modifications. But I think by adding that dormer. Um, it creates more prominence to that structure when there already is an accessory building in the garage, and this is yet a third accessory Well, that's attached, structure. Though, if that makes a difference. But, but do you feel this is an inappropriate historical detail? Because that's really what in we're here to discuss. In the context of this site in this space, and I, there are dormers on accessory buildings all over town, as you pointed out, but I think in this scenario, in this situation, you've already got um, a large main house, a large garage that has a lot of prominence to it as a, as a secondary outbuilding with big dormers on it. Uh, and now you have this third structure um, that its mass seems a little big for what it is, but as I said, it's there, it is what it is. So you continue to add to that prominence, um, it just, for that structure and that situation, I don't think um, works for this. But that's just my two cents on that. Because we haven't gone above, I mean, we're 12 inches below that ridge. And so in, in what we felt was appropriate was there's so much roof there. And bringing in the dormer actually lightens that and is more in keeping with the other, other roof lines. You're going to do this all in red cedar to match the house, or, or the house is actually asphalt, it's, right? Yeah, it's not going to match the house. house. Yeah. Everything will match the house and the garage. It's all the same materials. Okay. Um, you know, personally, I, I can go either way on this. Um, I, I, can see, um, I can see it without, I can see it with it. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, um, I don't think it's going to be a substantial uh, impact either way. Um, so that's kind of how I viewed it all along. Um, so I probably will vote um, in favor of it. Any, anything else? Okay. But, Mr. Chairman, yep. um, we have five. Yeah, Ben will be the fifth on this? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, if there are no other comments, um, you know, we could make a motion at this point. Um, ben, you wanna, would you like to do that? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion uh, for a certificate of appropriateness for 240 Main Street, a um, existing accessory building. Uh, which was once a garage, uh, to convert it to a pool house. Yes. Um, roofing to match uh, existing house asphalt. The um, pergola to be all wood, including the, uh, the post, the supporting structure. Um, doors and windows. Uh, wood, all trim wood. Um, these are from plans dated December 14th, 2017. Uh, am I missing anything? Siding to match existing? Siding to match. Colors? Is that to be determined now? Just matching. Matching. No, we're just matching the house. Matching the house, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate your cooperation. Thanks for coming in. Betty's not leaving us. She has yep. No, I get to stay. Okay. <laughs>
recusing myself on 243. All right. Um, next up, we have the Leland's at 243 Main Street. This is for some modifications to the front of the house, um, to the side, um, to the rear, small addition, and for the construction of a new garage. So we were out on Saturday to see the see the house pros changes. Thank you. We um we got a very close look at the at the, the front door and the trim and some of the detail around it. We also got a very close look at the the step and some of the um, proposed changes there. And got a good look at where the how the um, the addition to the rear and also the size of the the garage and the rear how that would look on the property the um, the applicant basically taped off the um, the garage in the back and you got a good look at the uh, topography and the landscape in the back to see how it would fit in relative to the house so that was um, that was very useful I thought thanks for having us out Again, just to recap, um, this home was built in 1808 as a two-family, and this is a wonderful photograph, albeit grainy, um, that the homeowner found from, I believe, 1896. It's the only one we have found that shows the, the two doors which lined up with the two windows. This is a really unique colonial because it has six windows across. It was a two-family originally. Um, and just, again, doing our research around town, it's very unusual to have so much blank space between the, the trim of the door and the, the next window horizontally. And there's always a relationship in these federal colonials vertically. When this home, somewhere in between 1945 and 1957, was turned into a single family home, one door was placed in the center with small side lights, and, and we believe they used the original pilasters. They're, they're very interesting, they're canted, very simple, there's a lot of heavy paint on them. But if you look at the front, from the, from the top of the door up, it has all been replaced. So we believe that was replaced sometime in the 1950s. If you look at the detail, it's kind of hard to see, but there was, there's at the top pediment, there's a dental molding, then there's kind of a triangular molding. It's like this layered dental system that is not appropriate for federal style, nor was it a 1950s detail. It almost looked like they went to the Home Depot of the 1950s, picked out a couple moldings and put them up. Um, what we were proposing, what we're showing on that drawing, and what I gave out on, on Saturday, what's so interesting, when you open the door, you can see where the wall was that split the two homes, and we've put it on our drawing here. So if, when you can see in the middle of the building, that, that, that distinction is still there. If you add the, the trim, and you clearly see that those two doors had originally been lined up with the windows above, as that photograph shows, there was a relationship between the front doors, the trim around those doors, and the windows above. And also you can see it was a much more equal space between these two windows and this trim. And it's just by default. I mean, I interpolated that, but I just kind of went backwards lining up the window and the doors, 
So this house was always meant to have some vertical relationship between the windows on the second floor and whatever was going on down below. We don't want two doors anymore. This is a beautiful single family home, but we feel like there's just too much blank space between what is currently the, the trim and the next window. And for such a long building, we feel these side lights from the 50s are just too skinny. So that's why we are proposing a very simple side light that's wider to have not leaded glass, but true divided light so it would be painted and to have a relationship with the windows up above. In looking um, around town, here's another example. This is on, I believe, Lincoln Street. And again, the doors line up with the windows. There's a relationship. This is one of the few that I could find that's also six light, six windows across the top. And there's always a relationship from the first floor to the second floor. And it's very simple detail, so you can see here. So this is really what we want to match, but widen. So we're gonna get rid of the dental and the little triangular detail and just do simple more of an austere federal detail. Here you can see those canted pilasters again, which we think is a wonderful detail and we're gonna maintain. This one I also found, I believe, on Water Street. Um, again, the doors line up with above. There's always a relationship from the first floor to the second floor, and that's what we wanna maintain. Looking at other homes in the neighborhood, same thing, there's always a relationship. This one I thought was really interesting. This is from 1836, I believe, on Middle Street. It has the wider side lights. And again, there's a relationship, and you can see there's similar space between the trim around the, this kind of entry, which we don't want to copy, but between the trim and the window, and then the next two windows. Same here, there's never this blank space. Again, here are wider side lights and it, it just looks more appropriate than what we're dealing with with those skinny 1950s. Here again, there's always a relationship. Here you can see it's equal space between the, the trim detail and that pediment at the door to the next window, and that's almost equal to the next space between the window and window. And that's kind of what we're dealing with with the main entrance. Do you wanna just talk about this or do you want me to go into the garage too? Is it easier to just break them up? Why don't you keep going? We'll, just, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll approach them all individually okay. as we go. So, so go that's our them. take, that we've done you know, some research around town. We really want there to be a relationship between the second floor and first floor in a very simple federal manner. For the garage... Um, I'm sorry, Heidi, sure. can you talk about the steps? Oh, yeah. So... I don't mean to throw you off, but... No, that's, that's fine. You can see a lot of places there are stone steps. And we do want to reuse the stone. Um, you can see almost all of these have stone. So what we would like to do is take the two stone steps, and this is something we all discussed, is and put them in the center, but set them kind of on top of each other so they become six inch risers. And so we still want to do that here. We, we're not showing it here, I'm just showing what's original. Um, because right now it's like a 12 inch step and then an eight and a half inch step into the house and it's very uncomfortable. So what we were discussing was using those existing slabs of stone, setting them so we have three six inch risers down and keep it very simple. And then we talked about doing just a simple brick path, straight path from, from the entrance to the street. And we're very flexible if you want this to be a herringbone, if you want it to be soldier course, you know, whatever makes the most sense. Um, you know, we thought we'd edge it with the brick and just keep it simple and clean. Then for our garage, um, so we looked at two different options. We looked at a, a 10 foot plate height, and a plate height is where the wall and the roof meet. Um, so that's what we call a plate height. So if we did the ones that we showed and discussed, the 10 foot is basically at the second floor. We really want this to feel more like a barn. So we really wanted to go up to the 13. It's 12 inside, it's 13 off the ground. Um, and 
in this one, we've reduced the dormer in the front. Um, we really want this to feel like a barn. And we do feel it's um, 180 feet back from the property line and street. It's 108 feet back from the, from the actual house. That is required because of the um, septic system. I can't get it any closer to the house because of the septic system. And I, that's on one of the drawings. This shows it as well. Um, And again, we were looking around town. This is on Main Street, you know, another, you know, beautiful colonial. And we love the look of the barn. Um, we don't want it as large as this. This is probably more like 14 feet high for the plate height. But we like that barn look. This is on Main Street down the street. This is probably closer to maybe a 12 foot plate height. Again, a smaller dormer. This one is more symmetrical. Again, it's got that higher plate height with a, a colonial. This one, same, same idea. Um, this one sets it back. This we didn't like as much, but it does have a gable facing the road. We prefer ours where the roof line keeps it lower, and then we have the smaller gable. But again, it's the gable facing the street. So this just shows what I just um, gave you. you can, if you see that dotted long rectangular that's the septic system and that's what dictates where it is and what we like is we located it in the middle in the back of the property so we're not triggering any zoning issues but also the the setback where the stairs are is really hidden by the house i mean you can barely see that dr leland um cordoned that off so we could see it but when you're walking down the the, the road or Main Street, it's very difficult to see. And, and what is positive about this, we're going to push the driveway towards the side property line. We're going to only make it 12 feet wide, which we, we all spaced out when we were there. And they're going to plant, you can see my very crude green <laughs> circles, to, to provide some planting and privacy so that the Leland's children have a wonderful private backyard to play in with the going down to the driveway, we'll actually have a, a car park and turnaround so you don't have to back out now, which is pretty difficult to do on this site. Um, so we're really just looking for that barn motif, like many of these homes have in the neighborhood. And um, you know, compared to how large the house is, that's the orange on that drawing. Um, and set, setting it in the middle of the, ha of the property, we feel it's kind of hidden by the main house and just the, the access with the road. And we're, we're completely flexible in what style garage door the board prefers. We're matching the, the six over six double hung windows and the materials will match the house. Anything else um, in terms of the presentation? Any uh, I good? I think that's it. We're okay. really, you know, again, we've been working with the board. We removed our covered entry. We're trying to simplify the front. Yep. But, you know, in looking at our research with other colonials, we really like that relationship that's more equal between windows and doors and having a relationship with the, the windows above. Okay. If we think what's an original detail on the house. Uh, questions from the audience, comments? Please, welcome. Okay. Um, discussion? Who would like to start? Uh, I ben? have a question. Um, on the front, Heidi, <coughs> is the, the pediment, the top of the pediment of what you're proposing, is that match the existing pediment? I'm going to keep the, I believe that is the original location. Okay. I think it's trunked it. But yeah, I'm keeping that height. I'm just taking off the dental. And did you have a, a colored photo of the existing front? Did you? I do. Um, well, I mean, I have a. I have a. Let's there we go. It's right. Hard okay. To see, but um, I don't know if you can see on the larger image. It's uh. There's one more back off. 
I mean, here you can see it has, it's almost like a corbel, then a dental, then these triangular, it, that have nothing to do with, with a federal style. So we're really looking, like even the old derby um, pediment, you know, we could copy that. It's just clean, simple, and it, it steps. And you can see in that, that picture from 1896, you can see that there was a heavy um, top pediment because you can see the shadow line. So I still want to maintain that, but I just <coughs> want to simplify this detail that doesn't seem to be appropriate with the style. Well, this seems like a natural progression to me. If, 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 if years ago, this could have happened where someone converted the house to a single family and, if, and the size of the side lights with the door would, would make sense. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly in, in favor of, of what you're proposing here for the front. I'd like to reuse the pediments, I mean, clean them up, but I think those are original. I think they were moved. And this is a, an all wood door with with wood silence. Yes. Yeah. Um, I appreciate all your research, uh, and I appreciate the PowerPoint. I mean, I think it's great I to be able to see this see. up here. So I think after seeing all that, and after having um, gone to the site visit and seeing clearly that that top is all relatively new compared to some of the other trim so. that's on the house then um, you know I think the modifications that you're proposing um, to the front um, look good I would like to see and depending on where this goes it could be a follow-up um, a detail section through the sure. top and the columns and what all the profiles are going to be and I was actually you know, if, if that was the direction we were going in, I was actually going to compare the dimensions of what's here now to Old Derby, because I think that has a beautiful front entry in how the pediment works. So I was going to take a picture of that, maybe that, maybe what we have here. And, and I think there's a great opportunity here to get that. That's, yeah, that's what we'd like to do. And I think that's at least a pseudo public building that I can not get arrested measuring. <laughs> Um, I think um, I'd like to see at some point too the hardscape. Just we'd need to see that hardscape plan if you're going to put the uh, sure. The we can there. work on the um, on the brick and I mean, um, is that something that I, we can work with the homeowner? We don't need a landscape architect. We can just do it ourselves. Yeah, I think you just need a drawing that yeah, shows that. what it is, and I think I'd probably show the modifications that you're planning for the steps at the same time as part of that package. We can actually, have our our surveyor add that to our site plan and I'll have him show the, the new driveway at the 12, 12 foot wide and we can look at where we can actually put planting. Yeah. Um, and in regard to the the structure of the barn I think I think it works well and I I don't have the drawing here but I saw Hans looking at a drawing it looked like there were some studies about bringing that we looked at, we down, looked at several yeah. options but every time we lowered it it looked like a carriage house rather than a barn yeah, and I we think really wanted it to look like a simple barn. I think what you have drawn um, is pretty successful. I think, and it's good to see it in comparison to some of these studies that you've done. Um, I know there was one suggestion. I think at the last meeting was in regard to simplifying this portion here and eliminating that small window. I don't know. This appears to be the last drawing. I don't yeah, know if this, this is an updated smaller. drawing. This used to be smaller. But, or we could eliminate it. He'd like us to just eliminate it. It's set five feet back. So what? We could eliminate that. So there's this drawing, and then there's these two drawings. I that think. that was when we were looking at options because they're different plate heights. See how that's the higher right. plate height. This is the lower. Um, so this is what we had on Saturday. But this, if you'd like, we can get rid of it. Well, I guess I'm just I'm asking where where are you in terms of what you'd like? And yeah, is it really this as opposed to? Yeah, this is what we'd like. We'd like the higher plate height. If you don't like that window, it used to be the size of half of this, but I can certainly get rid of it. You know, it's stepped back, and we feel that when you look at the site plan, I don't think you're ever going to see it. Yeah, it's back there. It's behind the corner. Because it's not, this steps back five feet to the column, and this 
that's beam, even. and then this is set back another four and a half feet. Yeah. So it's nine and a half feet from this corner. I honestly think it'll look like that. And it, and it was just light at the, at the door. Okay. But that could become a, a, a lantern. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a little bit of a different view on the, the front um, than my counterparts do. Um, I, I believe that when I went out there and looked at this, and I looked at the drawings, I think we measured, it was a little over 11 feet was the, uh, I think it's too substantial for the house. I think it, it um, I think it's, uh, it, it, it overpowers um, some of the other features of the home. So I, I, I would recommend, um, and this is what I said last meeting, I'm gonna save you some money here too, <laughs> maintaining what you have here with the front, have some lanterns, put them on blocks, move them out to the side a little bit. And I would have, um, I noticed on the picture, you've got some planters um, that are uh, up front. I would move those out to the side. You, you take up some space there with, um, with, with some of the, uh, the clapboards taking up that space. I think when they put this in, they got it right in proportion. I know it doesn't match up with the windows above, but I think they were trying to work with something that they didn't want to make it too big in scale, but they wanted to um, they wanted to have an entry that that worked that wasn't too grand for this for this style in this in this uh, this period. So um, you know some of the features we can debate about the um, you know the dental molding up up top, but um, I, I I I like what's there. I would I would keep that. Um, and I would just do something with the lanterns to take up that space, get rid of the onion lantern, have something a little bit more, um, more traditional, traditional style lantern for, for each side of the door and, and try to take up some space with, the, with those planters or something like that. Um, just, just my view. Um, as far as the garage goes out back, um, I think, uh, you know, the drawings that you presented to us um, at the site visit, I think simple is better. Um, I would go with the, uh, if, you're, if you're trying to uh, have a uh, more of a, uh, a barn carriage feel out there, I would, um, I would go with the higher uh, plate height that, that you're, re you're recommending here in this drawing. I think that would work well. Um, I think the, the scale of this works with the property because it is set back a ways. I think the building will stand on its own. I do not think it's going to compete with the house. I don't think it's going to compete with the neighbors either because they've got some existing structures that are back there also. And it's, um, it's set back um, just when the hill starts going up, so I think it'll be a nice, uh, a nice addition to the yard. I would take out the column here. I would, I would, just, I would go simple. Oh, sure. That can just be a square. Yeah, I would do something with the trim there or just, um, just have it just something very simple and straightforward. Uh, I know you're trying to pick up the features in the back of the house, yeah, but I, I have no problem making that a simple. I, I, I would just, I would just I keep it go straight forward and uh, keep it simplistic. But um, I think, uh, I think in general, this is, um, I think, I, I think this works well. Tomas. So I wasn't um, at the site list, and I apologize for that. Um, but I did go back and, and take a look. Um, I do like the new drawings with the um, with the more simplistic um, door that's uh, proposed here. However, I would echo what um, Hans just said in terms of scale. I don't have a problem necessarily making it bigger from what it is. This just looks. Well, what if I brought it in? I could make the side lights, they're 24 now, we can make them 18 inches and take six inches on both sides. So it's within the, the vertical lines of the windows above. It yeah, so, so something like that, I would be very much in favor of. If you were looking to make it, if, if you're looking to change what's currently there. Um, that would be more like this, that's yes. an 18 inch. Right. Which I so, just think, then the, then the light, the glass, matches in proportion to the glass and the that's in the window windows. and i think that's important because that's what also bothers me with those skinny side lights they're just very there's small nothing else that skinny so they're kind of in my view out of proportion with this large you know expanse of colonial yep 
but I, I have no problem pulling in six inches on both sides if you're comfortable with that. I would be very much in favor of something to, to that extent. I do think that Hence is right in terms of trying to put the lanterns on the outside. At this point, you don't have any drawings with lanterns on. No. Are you looking to not you do lanterns at all? a house that had them on the clapboard. On the outside? Everything is inboard. You know, that's above. You can see the lights above. Here it's on the pilaster. Here it's above. Like that to See? me looks, but it looks puny. Yeah, but that's because those lanterns are puny too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would get something in they proportion, federal style, in proportion to match if, if you're looking to do that. Um, and I would be in favor of that if, if you down the, the road would be, um, be looking to add that. If you choose not to, then have no but I think with we'd be either. amenable to both your comments if Hans would be feel looking at that drawing when we cut our section, pulling it in six inches, and then I can show a, a chunkier block with a, a nice squared lantern, if that makes sense. The only thing that bothers me is that in 1808 there weren't lanterns, but we're not living in 1808. Well, you figure that out with what you would like to do. <laughs> uh, but either or, um, I have no issues with any of the other um, um, proposals for the back of the house as it stands. Um, as it relates to the garage, um, my only thing, again, and I mentioned this last time, um, the side window next to the door, I would prefer to see a, a uh, um, some kind of a lantern or something like that next to it. That. We, we do have that. a window um, yeah, to the, the left. Um, we can but but that. again, it is some, not anything that we would be able to, to see from the road. I don't think road. you'll see it, but, but I wouldn't. think we're, we're very, I don't we're think trying we to be sensitive to the board's comments. And if that window is bothering enough people, I can remove it. Okay. Um, so that sets it relates to the garage. And then, um, as um, Mike had mentioned, um, some kind of um, hardscape as it related sure. to the walkway. We'll, we'll have the surveyor um, add that so we can see. And then he'll have it. I'll need that for the building permit anyways. As it relates to the driveway, the existing driveway would be taken out. It's a new driveway that goes in. Or would well, you use the existing? Are you cutting, cutting it? Cutting a chunk of it as it goes along the house and back. It would narrow until it got to the garage. Okay, but the front of the, the driveway as it stands right now is... Here. To get to the house, yeah. Right now, the asphalt goes all the way to the house. Yep. And, and just kind of... Start adding some greener. Right, right, so what I'm saying is this portion yeah. stays the same, stays, is that correct? Yes. And so right here, see how the house is at a different angle than the side line? Yep. I'd like to take the drive 12 feet and follow and then curve out so that I get a car park so I can safely turn around. But we can have the surveyor put that on accurately yep. with, our, with our two paths, which will be broken. Perfect. Thank you. So, I agree with uh, Tomas to mentor. I love the simplification of the front. I think a little bit of narrowing would uh, keep some of the character of the property. Love the, the barn and but do like the idea of simplifying that column. Yeah, that's easy to do. Yeah. So we had a... I'm not sure exactly what your, um, which way you're leaning in terms of the garage, the barn. Um, if, like you, the if, smaller... if you if if you wanted to go with the original or with what you handed out at the, like the site smaller, visit. Um, okay. the smaller dormer. Okay, and then as far as did you want just one ridge or do you want to you want to do it two separate? We prefer this okay. because the stairs work better. Okay. And and we just really feel you're not going to see that. Okay. That one was getting very very deep, and we were starting to go okay. back in the. Okay. No, it it definitely can um, it can uh, break up the structure a bit, and it That's it doesn't it I'm doesn't seem to be as large. Does the um I just want to make sure we're giving the right guidance on this. Um, does Mike or Ben, do you have a preference on? on which, which direction to go to? That one we tried to make look asymmetrical, but then there's a lot of roof. Yep, yep. Where this one, the, the dormer is in the center, yeah. and that's really what you're going to see. I don't believe you're going to see much of the 
Yeah. So. Well, and this sort of breaks. I mean, this is much more narrow than that one, and this is just kind of set back. So I, okay. I think this one's okay. Mike, is that the A2-2? It's the one dated December 14th. A1. Yeah. yeah. And, and you guys are okay with taking the column out? Yes. Yep. It's going to be all right. I'm just going to have a post, right? A square post. I'm not removing, right? I mean, it's right. Getting rid of round going to square. Going to square, yeah. Because okay. you'll need. Yeah, I need something on the need support. I mean, I okay. don't. It looks right. Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, Have you have you selected a garage door, um, carriage door that you'd like we to go with? We are very um, open. I believe in the original package we provided, we showed the, the wood options. Um, we showed the one we liked, but again, we're we're quite flexible. Um, I have it here, Heidi. If, uh, I think these artisan doors are yes. Yeah. yeah, so really I think the Leland's are, are open to what that looks like. We would like the, the board's opinion on that. You want to match the, the, the one, window? Our oh. choices for garage doors, our first one was the Medallion Series Carolina collection. I believe there's... Our Carolina. second choice was called Brandy Wine Collection. So there's four different kinds in each. Yeah, we don't like that. I think what you have drawn works well. I yeah, just we don't just want, you want to match simple. match the um, exactly. And I like the four. Um, I'm trying to find this. Is. This is this is a. It's this without the X. Okay, all right. Basically, which we thought was simple. Something in here, Lexington. And it would have lights. It would have lights at the top. Yeah. Let me just put everything in here so you can see the options. But well, the drawing from. Well, I mean, I mean, you, you can pick out the one. I mean, I. I That's I, Carolina collection. Okay. Okay. But I mean, as drawn, I think I think works well. Yes, it's that one without the arch. You know, they show you right. the one without. So we're kind of combining these yep. two. Yeah, that's the Carolina question. Okay. So the simple um, board, vertical board, but yeah. with, the, with the four simple. Yeah, so it's just right there. So you're right. There's the Carolina collection. This has yeah, the four eight lights. lights. Yes, four of them. Yeah. Okay, so oh, I am circling yeah. this. Yes. Upper, upper left hand corner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. That's, it's we, hard. Yours we got, got a little cut off. Yes, that it. one. That was our first choice. That's what we did. Okay. There's wood. It could be painted. So I think when... Assuming you're coming back with some modifications, just yeah, clearly indicate, it, circle it, or pull out all the other stuff that's not pertinent. Well, I'm wondering if we can, we have enough to get going on the garage here tonight. I think so. You know? Because yeah. I think we're just talking about some minor detail. Yeah. Shut, yeah, shutters just, to match the house. The yeah. Yeah. Wood shutters to match the house. And you're going to do... Um, you're going to do a wood window up here, all wood throughout the, throughout the garage. True divided light, simulated. Yes. Sim sim <laughs> All they love. <laughs> yeah, wood, simulated, divided light. And so they will be insulated. Glass. We'll either use Marvin or Colby. Maybe I'll get more light in there up the step up top. We'll probably play around with the second floor and, and probably we'll add more windows at all. We wanted to get the exterior right, and in that shed, we could always add more. If you if you want to put um, 
another window up there for more light on the second floor you can I mean that's we're, we're not gonna review that I mean it's it's you know if you want to put if you want to space two up there to get some more light up there if you want to do that I don't know yeah, if I you've think got now that we have you know what the the volume looks like we'll we'll okay. focus on the interior we really wanted to get this yep. nailed down first okay and I don't believe we can see this this rear part no. so Half, most of that's there right <clears throat> Okay. Can I have that print or get copy? Yep. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. Any other any other comments, questions on the garage? Okay. So why don't we um if you're if you're happy with that, we can move ahead with the um garage. with the with the and then you can come back with some drawings on the on the front. And I'll revise the barn drawings per our discussion this evening. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll just, in the motion, we'll just call out the changes that we made and with the, um, and with the doors that you want and the features that you want and the, and the wood and the windows, so. Next time, do you want to talk paint color? I want to rush you. Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, We'd love to talk paint colors next when we come back. Um, we'll bring some samples from the Historic America colors. We we're just we kind of talked about it. Last time is where technically white is not in the historic book. <laughs> is it a historic color? Just option wise. Uh, for um, for new construction or for no. well, well, no. You for, want it to match, right? The garage and the house. Right, but we were talking for oh, for future for both. Yeah, um, you'd have to do an application to to change it to uh, to white. Um, Can we discuss that at the next hearing. So, so we we have uh, we have an approved palette of colors. Yeah, no, we that, have that. That, yeah. that we use, and you'll notice yeah. that there's not really a, a white white on there. There's like a there's some creams on there um, <laughs> that that might be amenable to you, but you want to match the period of the house with that color palette. Right. Okay, so a regular white. Regular white is off the table, considering every house in the Hingham is the same period. So those those houses have been grandfathered in. That's what uh, that's what we're over, asking. over yeah. the years, and there's a whole history and kind of story behind yeah. behind that, and kind of what happened at the, you know, um, after the Civil War. Yeah, that was our question: why so. that wasn't on the yeah. color, but it's on houses. White wasn't a color until until later, yeah. um, and that's kind of why we we've, we've stuck with the palette. And we've and those are the approved colors. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can read this one. Do, do we have to get the color of the shutters approved too? We change. To to change them? That you change them, yeah. Uh, yes. You should yeah. <clears throat> and they come from the same palette. Yes. Or, uh, yes. The only other thing I'll kind of throw in there in terms of colors is I think you're proposing stain for the front door, stained door, not painted. No, no, it's, it's all painted. It's, it's painted. currently a red, painted red or a, a burgundy. We would like to change it, if nothing else, to black to match the shutters. So it's just a different color. It's not actually stained. It's painted. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a weird door. red. You mean the front of the building? Yeah, no, that's that's fine because I know in the past, and I know this was a thing that Marty was. Um, pretty keen on was. Um, it's hard to tell. I'm pretty sure that wasn't on the color palette. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I think we want it to match the shutters. Yes. So we'd like it to be whichever way it goes. Yeah. The door. But everything else would be white. <clears throat> Don't you think? Because even the side lights should be what the trim color. The only thing that should be painted a color is the moving part. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you have a Do you have a color palette? Yeah, yeah. We okay. We have it. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. You want to make a motion for the uh, the barn garage? Sure. In the rear modifications to the house. Yes. Yeah. Rear and side. Yeah, rear and side. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to issue a certificate of appropriateness to 243 Main Street uh, for the addition of a um, 
barn slash two car garage structure in the rear of the property uh, based on site plan submitted and floor plans and elevations dated uh, December 14th, 2017. Uh, specifically elevations uh, drawing number or letter A. Um, the column by the uh, side door is to be revised to a square column in lieu of round. Uh, windows are to be simulated divided light wood windows, either Marvin or Colby. Um, all uh, siding and trim uh, is to be painted wood, uh, the color to be specified at a later date. Um, the rear of the barn structure um, elevation may be modified to include two windows at the top dormer in lieu of one as shown in the drawings. Um, the bar, the doors are to be Carolina Collection uh, Medallion Series, um, Artisan Custom Door Works. Those square windows are rectangular. Right, with the square windows um, similarly as drawn in the architectural elevations. Um, also include the modifications to the rear of the house as proposed um, in the elevations A2-1, as well as side elevation to revise uh, windows on the upper levels as shown in the elevations. Uh, modifications to the front elevation of the house are not approved at this time. Uh, and the applicant will uh, return with modifications based on discussions. The windows in the in the side elevation are those STLs, ADLs, true divided light. True divided light on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we do simulate, it will look different. Right. And the third the third floor window is to remain yes, that you have there now. Okay. okay. Should we state that? Uh, third floor window to remain on the side of the house. Um, door in the garage to be wood. You see that? Yep. Okay. Uh, applicant to come back with any um, light fixtures for the um, for the barn. You can just give them. Them. Yeah, you can just bring them to Andrea. Show us what you're. We don't need. We don't need a hearing. But just show us what you bring a sample. Okay, next time. Next okay. Time. All right. Um, I'll second. Second. Tom Tomas will second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Um, what, do you know the date for the next hearing? Thank you. Um, okay. Heidi, when you come back next time, could you just could you also do one with just blocks and, and lanterns? Yeah, Pick out yeah, some lanterns that'll work without yeah, yeah. without and just um maybe take a photo with those urns on the side just to just to just to see if that if that will get the job done for them. See what that see what that looks like. And maybe just with the uh, the stone, maybe you can just reuse those two stone pieces there and just and, and see if that'll work. Just like that. See, see how it looks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Sorry for the delay. Um, I'm gonna, yeah. So, uh, next up, we have um, Jason Roberts is here from uh, 29 Pleasant Street. We were also out to see to see their house and their plans for 
uh, demolition of their garage and the construction of a new garage. How are you? Doing well, how are you? I heard you had a flight in today. You made it? Good. Just made it. Good. Awesome. Glad you're here. Um, any, um, do you want, you want to just um, give us a refresher for, for those that weren't at the site visit and uh, of what, what the overall vision is and plan? And sure. Yeah. The, just, um, you can just be brief. Yeah, the, the, the main idea is to um, add, uh, make the garage larger uh, so it can accommodate two vehicles and um, things like garbage cans and, and um, you know, kind of basic. Some of the other goals um, in setting it back is to give a little bit more driveway room. Um, in front of the house is a no parking zone, so it gets a little difficult when we have, you know, more than two guests. So to give a little bit more space with the, in the driveway, make the garage uh, better able to accommodate two cars, uh, make it able to be secured because um, it can't be locked right now um, the way the doors are designed. Um, and then uh, to use the opportunity in the back to add um, a little bit of uh, recreational space near the pool area and to have a, um, you know, room for just a half bath uh, that's in proximity to uh, the pool. Um, that's basically the those are basically the goals. Um, the other, uh, the design of the <coughs> proposed garage, um, we tried to be as uh, close to identical as possible to what's there um, because we like it. Um, given that it's a, it's a little wider, it is also a bit taller, and that's what was reflected in the story pole, as crude as it was. I apologize for that. Um, but it's four feet higher than uh, the current um, roof line. Um, and then I had staked out the dimensions too, where it's also a bit wider and longer. But other than that, we really did try to keep it, um, you know, as close to identical um, in style as what's there today as we could. Okay. Any comments from the audience? Okay. Um, discussion from the commission. It was very helpful to go out and, and take a look at the property. Um, you have a, um, it's, it's, it's quite a large lot, so I think what you're proposing here is, um, you know, in the works. Um, Jason had a, a conversation about, um, about the existing building, and um, it is a, it's, it's a quaint structure. It, it, um, it uh, I, I, we were trying to do some research to see how old it was. I don't know if you've got um, any, any specifics on that. I don't have documentation. There is a, um, <clears throat> there's a, there seems to be something inscribed in, con in the concrete that, the, if I remember right, 1941. Yeah. But yeah. that could also be when they re put concrete over that spot. Right? So I, yeah. I can't claim that that's the, the date of construction for the garage. Okay. But certainly it's no later than that. Yeah. It looks like it may be um, some of the turn of the century. I'm, you know, just based on how the wood was cut, um, but um, could give or take 10, 20 years, who knows. Um, Mike, any, any thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, I guess one of the questions, and I think you guys might be talking about that a little bit on the site visit, is what, what is your ability to reuse that existing structure elsewhere on your property? Um, because I'd, I'd hate to lose it. It's a sweet little structure. The, the entire structure or parts of the structure or? Uh, I mean, ideally the entire structure, but yeah. you know, at least at minimum, that's sort of the portion in the back. Yeah, I mean, I would have concerns with the entire structure then being three structures on the property and, and, and that presenting a different set of challenges. Um, in terms of the back, um, I also do like it a lot. I, I would absolutely find something to do with it. Um, you know, and, and figuring out where it would go on the lot, we, we could certainly be open to discussion. It's not something that we would do if not for just the purposes of preserving it. So the, um, what I would dream up to do in there um, is not, you know, kind of part of the original goal, um, but it's something that, um, you know, I've talked to my wife about and, um, you know, in the interest of preserving it and to the extent that it's possible, because it really just does have the three walls, and this is where I would look to... Um, <coughs> The, for, for advice, but it, it's, it's not a four wall structure, so it would have to be moved and then you know, reinforced some way and rebuilt. But w long story short, um, you know, it's not something we're opposed to, but it's also not something that um, is a, 
a priority for us for the purposes of the space that it would provide. Yeah, I'd, I'd, um, I'd, I'd echo what Mike is saying and what you're talking about. Um, I think, um, I think to, to put that somewhere else, I think you've got some space, it's a big enough lot, um, whether it's on, you know, close to Downing Street or, or in a little bit, um, could have access maybe uh, from Downing Street, um, could, could be a nice setting, um, you know, somewhere close to those, those large pines you have towards the rear corner. Um, but I think there's a, a lot of um, there's there's you know shop capabilities here. There's storage capabilities for st for stuff in the in the yard that um, you may not be using for you know the, the, the new garage. Um, so if um, you know if you could if you could investigate that, um, I, I, I think uh, certainly I would I would be willing to move forward with something like this. Um, you, you may find out that um, moving the whole structure um, may be similar in cost than just moving part of it. Um, and it may be more cost effective to move the whole thing because then you don't have to create a new wall and you're not, you're not you know, rebuilding as much. Um, the other thing is that um, you, know, you could possibly just you know, put a slab down and put this on top. And then if you didn't want to, you know, if you didn't want to address this right away, you could at a later point. Um, so. Uh, so it's, it's something to think about. Yeah, but I, I, I would be, um, it's easier for me to see the benefit of uh, the back part, um, even, I mean, even if it added some cost. I would have some concern that even though it's a large lot, if we move the whole thing, mm -hmm. um, it, would, it would start to, mm -hmm. to really encroach on just other uses for the open space. Okay. Um, but, um, but it's certainly something we can, um, you know, we can look into um, in terms of the feasibility and the cost. Yeah. This is, um, with this application, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's almost like we need to figure out what you're going to do with this first before we can move forward on the new construction because this is, require, this is requiring you to build something right on that spot. So for us to, um, you know, I don't want to hear what the other commission members have to say, but um, th that's, that's kind of how I'm thinking about this. We have to figure out what we're going to do with this first. Is it going to be a demo? Or is it going to be something we're going to move? Because in order to go forward with a new project on that, because it's right on the existing, yeah. you know, with existing garages. If I could just add to, I think if if it comes to the point where the structure um, is moved or there's an agreement that it's torn down, I don't think that necessarily recreating the old structure in the new spot is really necessary anymore so I think you could potentially rethink um, the design of the new structure um, in a different way there's something and I can't quite figure it out yet there's something odd I think a little bit about the proportions of that front elevation where it's just um, it seems like a modern garage and I don't know if it's the width versus the height and the pitch but I think if it comes to the point where that structure is removed from that spot, then I don't think that recreating it um, is necessary. Maybe that's still what you what you want to do, but I would encourage you to to think of some other options um, as other ways to to put a garage in that spot. I think that's a good point. You don't want two of the same structure looking the same on on the on the lot. You know, one kind of a. A replica of the, of the other so you've got then you'd have some more flexibility to adjust the pitch maybe you want to you would know, still have to you know it would still have to be appropriate for the lot and especially relative to your house but maybe you know maybe it's something that's you know it's 24 feet wide you know you get you know you get the width in the back maybe there's a the window up above is a little bit more substantial maybe there's a little bit of storage space up on the second floor without taking the peak up too high but there's a lot you know we've seen a lot of garages recently that they accommodate some of that so we were also <coughs> very concerned about scale we had heard that that yep. was a concern um, so it's hard right without yep. I mean this is where guidance would really would really help yep. um, we're, we're trying to make it function well and you know fit with something that you would deem appropriate and, and you kind of feel like I'm grasping at straws a bit but yep um, uh, 
but I, I hear that, and you know we, that you know we could we like this design, and if this design were okay, we would be we would go forward with it. If okay. the design's not okay, we would come back with something else and try again. Okay, I, I want to hear what these guys have to say before we give you some some something a little bit more firm to go with tonight. Uh, well, com coming out onto the property and seeing the building, the building is really uh, quite a building uh, historically. It was charming. Uh, you can see what, what uh, history in there. But it's also very clear uh, that you can't use it uh, for the purposes that you have it right now. Um, it, it actually seems unsafe to me in many ways. So I would support, I would support your, uh, your new design. I haven't thought about moving the building. Um, but it clearly, uh, clearly you have to have options um, to be able to have a garage that's usable. I was concerned about uh, when I heard about the break-ins. Uh, windows that won't close. That's a very, I think it's a very unsafe structure, and I would support uh, tearing it down or removing it or moving it, whatever. But my original thought was to support uh, your um, your proposal. Okay, thank you. Um, so I was not at the site visit on Saturday, and I apologize, but um, I did walk by and drive by a couple of times, and I really appreciate. Um, you're putting up the story poll because I was the one that had asked for it. Um, so I did look at that. Um, my concern when I look at the story poll and, and your new proposal is the overall height. If there is a way to take what you have in the proposal, just lower it a little bit um, so that it mimics more of the original structure. Um, I would be very much in favor if there is a proportion of the old structure that could be used somewhere else, whether or not that's the back portion of it. Um, if, if, uh, if it's the entire thing, I think um, uh, Hunt is correct in then trying to go in a completely different direction as it relates to a garage. And then maybe you could do something that had more height, if it's the height that you're looking for. Um, but if, if you end up not being able to use the structure somewhere else and it ends up being um, something that then has to be demolished, um, I would then be very much, um, th then I'm in favor of trying to um, sort of recreate what's there, for, um, except I would like something that's slightly lower, um, especially in the front. Um, bring that down a little bit. So maybe not it's, maybe it's not 18, Seven, maybe it becomes 16, 17 feet in, in height instead. So just to, to bring the ridge down a little bit. So, but otherwise I have okay. no issues with where it's located and, or anything like that, no. And I was not at the site visit, I'm sorry for that. So I'm gonna refrain from making comments that are less informed than my commission. So it, um, it sounds like we're a little bit split on, on what to do with this building, um, is, is what I'm hearing. Um, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a three vote to two, you know, to get something through. So you just need three of us to, to vote in favor of it. Um, so, you know, you may have the votes, you, you may not, it sounds like. Um, uh, I, I think it would be a good use of time to explore um, uh, what it what moving this would would be like if it's something that's feasible for you if it can be moved or not um I, I think it's i think it's a worthwhile use of time i mean you guys have been in the in the there for a while so i think you're making um you're making the right decisions here and you're going about it very methodically um so i i would i would um i would give a building mover a call and see if it's feasible see if there's a, a location that that might work on your property um, I certainly would be in favor of, of the back half if you could keep the back half and then you know maybe you can do a you know close it off or make a little extension off of it so it works as a shop or something like that for you um, you know that that might that might work out in the property um, so that's 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 kind of where I'm coming out um, I think um, I think if you were able to do that I think you could make some um, adjustments to the garage here itself. Um, I do agree with Mike. I think it gets a little squat if you don't, 
I, I think you, need, you know, I saw the I saw the ridge height and kind of you know what you were looking at relative to the house, but I think if you if you adjust the pitch a little bit higher, I think it might look a little bit better, a little bit more appropriate. Um, it just seems uh, relative to the house. It just seems. Uh, it, I just want to make sure, just so I understand, is that the same? <clears throat> where you were saying go lower, you're saying go higher, or, my, or is it different? Uh, is there, are you talking about a different part of the structure? So, I'm just talking about the um, what you're proposing here. I, I think I'm just I think I'm just not following. Yep. If, I, 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 it sounded as if you're talking about the same thing from a different perspective. I want to. Yep. Yeah. I I feel that this you can take this up a little bit and adjust the pitch so it's a little bit higher so it's not the the building is not as squat okay. smooshed. I understand you know? that. Now is that is that a, in contrast yeah, to what yeah, you were saying? That was not what I said. However, if you go with Hunts' solution, you could also make the window in the front bigger. Okay. And that changes the whole scope of the garage. Okay. I would be very much in favor of something like that. Yes. Okay. I, I just want to make sure you, that I knew you were were or were yeah. not talking about the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. what do you what pitch do you think might work here, Mike, with this? With the what, do we, what do we typically look at with these with, um, that, with that width? And we don't want to we don't want to encroach on the house. No, I'm not sure what the pitch is now, but you know, maybe you, well, it's seven seven twelve, so maybe ten. Try a ten pitch and and see what it, what it looks like. I think it's proportionally, um, you know. And I just last time we were here, I just did a a sketch to try and see what would happen if we dropped it and I think it helps with the proportions a little bit because it's just a steeper pitch but I think if if you're sliding that up and you're changing those proportions and as you're saying you're getting a, a larger window I think it helps with that proportions but it's sort of squat and flat okay um, I think what I'm saying is if, if you're trying to be where you, then you need to go more flat is what I would say or otherwise I would lean okay. towards something like what Mike and Hans is saying where you're simply just raising the Got pitch it. up okay um, the whole thing all right we could potentially draw both and take a look in the area just a question sort of programmatically the area in the back um, is this a result of um, the program that you want or a result of sort of trying to recreate the other, the old barn? Right? Which page are you looking at? The uh, floor plan. Oh, okay. Um, um, because again, I think once you start playing with those proportions, you may be able to break this plane in the back here. Um, a little bit that starts to um, break this up in a different way so you're not specifically recreating what's there um, so s single ridge or maybe just kind of a shed off the back maybe right or yeah. even sort of breaking it similar to the prior application although right. it's sort of turned the other way but um, you know I think there's a lot of opportunity here with this structure if you think of some other um, sort of breaking away from sort of recreating what was there are you talking about use as an Right. Okay. Um, I mean, it, I think if you were to do it as you suggested, um, I think you just sort of take a look at some of the roof lines. Um, <laughs> Once you bring this, once you bring this peak up, does it really make sense to do this in the back here, in terms of another gable, or do you break the plane in a different way and change that roof line? It seems like that program in the back is fine, but once you start changing the pitch, you may want to think about how this portion is addressed because it may appear that this is just sort of one long facade so you may be able to break that up a little bit because once it gets you're sort of tightening that gap between the house and the garage so I think if you could push that back a little bit you might be able to sort of uh, give a little breathing room there or at least it would appear that way so um, you might want to consider that this part is just set back about five feet 
Right. Back about five feet. So. Yeah. They're connected. Yes, they're connected. Yep. So would would she? She just drew this another little section here and pushed it back. There's a little porch here and another door. So that's a side view. So that would essentially take this wall and move it in. Right. And it's, it's not by a line, you're not going to be able to use program space, but it just breaks up that. Uh, okay. That would be fine. Yeah, it's not. Um, if this room were a little shorter, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect it, yeah, or a little narrower, I should say. Okay. Any uh, any thoughts on the pavilion or any of the other features? I mean, these are all towards the rear. I don't think you're going to see much, um, and I think the 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 main the main issue here is getting getting this part right and figuring out what you want to do with the existing building. And we have, um, I don't know if you, we've got some names and numbers of, of building mover folks that we can get to you too if you want to sure. investigate yeah. that, that, would, that would see what that would entail. So um, if I can, I think I'm going to need to ask you to sign an extension so that we can um, move on to, um, so if you want. Wouldn't mind coming with me for a minute. I just want to make sure we've got okay. all the questions that you that you may have or that we've covered enough here for you that you've got enough to go on. So you kind of, I, I really, I understand what you were trying to go with here. You wanted to, re, you, I think you really like you, what you have now, but you just want to make it a little bit bigger. So I, I totally get the direction you're you're going, and and we're just we're just trying to see if, yeah, you like it so much, why not keep it and then build something that. Might might really work for you with yeah. uh, with some so, additional storage. So so to be clear, um, we would move it out of respect for the structure. Yep. I would find a way to use the space. Okay. Um, that would be the only reason. Okay. Um, you know, we wouldn't choose to spend our money that way. We wouldn't choose to make another structure on the property where we like the open space. I get um, you. <clears throat> but if that's the only way that we can move forward with the project, we're willing to consider it. So I mean, yep. that's that's the circumstance under which we're investigating this. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do after we investigate is we'll come back and just ask um, if we're comfortable with it. We'll say we're comfortable with it. We'd like to move forward. Yep. Otherwise, we'll ask you guys to vote on okay. the demolition. Okay. All right. That's fine. I got you. And if you have any questions between now and then, or if you want to get together or something like that, sure. even clarification, just let Andrea know and we'll, yeah. we'll make it happen. Okay. 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 Because, I mean, you, you've, got a, you've got a pristine house. I mean, that... You know, original clapboards, and it's just—it's a gem. So. The, the main structure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I thought you were calling this pristine. Oh. So, you know, I was wondering if we were at the same site. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> and, and and the surrounding, what you, yeah. what you've done there to keep it in, intact, and I mean, you've done a you've done a great job with it. So we just want to just try and help you with. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, running just a little bit behind schedule. Next up, we have the uh, North Street Community Church. Um, hey, good to see you again. Last time we uh, we talked a little about the steeple and and some of the composite materials, and sure. I think you've got some additional information. We had some couple questions for you. And sure, sure. Um, so thanks for coming in again. I had um, you do have the new drawings for showing the detail attachment details, right? I did mail them to you. Yep. We got that. Okay. Okay. That was the first thing. Um, one of the things I th I may have shown you these pictures before, but let me uh, distribute them again. I know there was some concern about the um, historic value of the, the interior parts of the spire. These are some recent photos, actually, of the data that were taken earlier this year, probably. In the, in the, so they're a little bit different. You can pass those around. Um, 
as you can see, it's very newish looking material. I don't know when it was installed, but I, mean, I think you can make your own judgment, but it looks pretty evident that it's not original material. So for whatever that's worth, anyway. Um, we do now, I, again, I, you know, I don't recall whether we covered the subject matter or not. We do need to replace the entire spire. I know the original plan was just, I think, the lower seven feet. Um, when our engineers did a further structural evaluation, um, it came to light that the antennas, which are, are fairly large, won't fit in the interior of the spire as it is now anyway. So, because obviously as it gets narrower as you go up, so we're kind of stuck with having to replace the, the entire piece. So. So the um, the break point between um, what's coming off and what's uh well essentially it's like from the base of the spire on up. Yeah. Um, I have a set of plans here myself. I don't know what you would call it. Kind of a, I mean I call it a flange because it looks like a flange at the very bottom there. If you look at the um, the detail elevations on the S1. Um, you can kind of see where the break point is. The line's a little bit denser on the steeple elevation, a little bit thicker than the belfry underneath it. So it looks like from there up. And of course, the, de the decorative weather vane at the top is, would remain the same. So it's not, you know, that would just simply be put back on top. And the height, so it's 17 foot three about, and so that's approximately the height of the existing, right? So you're not making it any taller? No, no. I mean, I can tell, you know, I can tell you this. I've seen a number of them, and I, did I show you the, I apologize because I've been doing a lot of hearings like, did I show you the photo of the spire that was actually replaced um, on a very similar looking church? That's actually across the street from my house in Lexington. I cannot tell, I mean, you can take my word for it or not, it looks exactly like the original spire. I will say this, these guys that fabricate the, um, the fiberglass replacements, whether it's a spire or something like that, the dimensions and the design is, is pretty remarkable. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very good match, okay? I feel confident based on what I've seen before that you won't be able to tell the difference, so. Now, if you were to stand on the spire and you're, you know, two feet away, obviously you're going to be able to tell that it's not wood. You may not see some of the blemishes, but, you know, from the street, you, sh you shouldn't see a difference. Um, so anyone feel a need that um, if we were to go forward with this, that we'd need to store this or? Um, yeah, I know that you wanted to do that. I have asked, I mean, uh, I know the Public Works Department can't do it. I asked Jeremy Scott from the church. They don't have the space for it. Um, you know, I haven't, I've asked around T-Mobile, you know, doesn't want, it's not their spire, and I don't think they have a storage facility. I mean, I think it's a reasonable request, but I haven't been able to come up with anybody involved in the project that's willing and able to do it. That's, that's just, you know, I just tell you, it's, you know, yeah. It's not small. Any questions? I think this is one of those situations where we live in a time where everybody wants to be able to use their phones and electronics and things like that. Yeah. And we need to sort of figure out a way to put these antennas in a place where they're not um, obstructing the view for, for all of us. Um, and I find that this is a, not a perfect alternative, but a, uh, a close, close by. And I do appreciate that, uh, that the existing GPS antenna will be able to, uh, to disappear into, uh, into right. the new it's going uh, into the yeah. inside, yeah, because yeah. I know they so, brought so, that up, yeah. Yep. So I, I do appreciate that. Sure. 
I know you asked for it and we're able to do it, so there's no reason not to. So. You know. Say it's one of the most attractive cell towers I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> ben, can you um, tell from the cuts of the wood or anything like what? So, uh, I've, 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 not I've, enough detail there. Yeah, I've seen I've seen wood like this in uh, early 1900s or even late 1800s. It's, it's hard to say. Um, the the board widths. So the perspective of the camera, I can't tell the, the width of the, the board widths, and that, that would be helpful. That would be quite telling. The wider they are, the older they are. Um, but they're all rough hewn, but dimensionally, it's what they were using around late 1800s, early 1900s. And I wish I had a warehouse to store something six feet wide, 17 feet tall. Fill it with steeples. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a special circumstance where we um, we would entertain the use of um, composite material um, in order to um, in order to uh, satisfy what what the applicant would like to get done here. Um, the other thing here that this is uh, so far off the street, um, nobody's going to be looking at this uh, unless they're up in a scaffolding, um, you know, this far away from it. So. Um, I think I'd be in favor of this. Appreciate your consideration. Any other questions? No, I would support it as well. Okay. It's necessary. Is there anything, anything constructive to do with them? It's probably nice wood these days. It's sort of a funny bunch of shapes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a win-win. It's a win for the church. It's a win for the, for the town. I think it's would support it. Well, the, you know, uh, we've been there a number of years, and it, it's a good site for us. It's you know, it's always difficult in residentially zoned areas to do something that's not too visually obtrusive. And we're you know, it's good when we have a church, because churches typically have steeples, and you know, you can typically. Uh, hide the antennas somewhere and that's what we're able to do here okay mike you okay yeah okay yep. um ronnie would you like to make a motion on, on this sure. um, i would make a motion to grant um a certificate of appropriateness for the T-Mobile cell tower at the North Street Community Church at 235 North Street. Yeah, she'll have to get it from the um, from HCAM later. Um, with the the uh, replacement or the, the the reworking of the steeple to be as um, submitted in the plans received they're dated the plans that we were given tonight as of 12 14 1917 if you want to if there's probably see the tie on the right hand side there's a block of revisions if you want to make sure that you're referring to these plans okay. there's a date in there that might be helpful there is you see it the revised yeah. date, 11, okay, 1129, yeah, yeah, I can barely yeah. say, 1129, sure. 17, revision. Yeah. Okay, did steeple I forget anything? Steeple replacement drawing. Yeah, um. On S1, there's the steeple replacement drawing, right? Due to the, um, due to the size uh, of the steeple, it's not feasible to, um, to store it. Well, plus, you know what, Mr. Chairman, I also, <coughs> I talked to the pastor, and um, I also read the Form B, and there have been so many changes, and I think that it's, it's all vinyl-sided, and who knows what, what is underneath, but in this case, um, there's not much, according to this, that is that really remains of the original 
Ronnie made the motion and um, Needs a second. we're looking for a second. Oh, all right. Okay, good. So I'll second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The, the motion was pretty much what so you can get it off of each camera yeah, if you need the specifics. Okay. 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 Thanks Thank for coming you. in again. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, I think we have Bree here. Bree Williams. Yep. Good to see you. Uh, this is 730 Main Street. Uh, we were out um, visiting uh, Bree's home over the weekend. And she would like to make some, uh, some changes to the windows. So thanks for having us out. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, so Brie would like to replace all five um, uh, of the windows. We um, we got a close look at them. I wasn't able to go upstairs, Mike. I think you were able to go up. Yes. Um, I think Andrea may have gone up yes, too. I did. I was uh, I was downstairs with the puppy. Your, with your dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, let me just see if there. Do you have any? Um, do you have anything else to, to add based on? Uh, I was one interested in the feedback, yep. and I did have um, a contractor who came back from Ireland today. Okay. Um, drop off some additional spec information. I'm seeing this for the first time myself because I literally just came from the office, ran home okay. to get it. Um, and they did drop off a sample mm -hmm. of the Marvin product as well, um, if you were interested in seeing that. And the one question I have, and um, you're pass that around is based on whether you thought the two windows up top on the second story mm. were um, not original to the home because I did notice after looking at the paperwork they dropped off today that the two sashes have divided light both on the upper and lower where no other windows in the house have that. Everything else is divided light on the upper mm -hmm. and a clear pane on the lower. I'm not opposed to doing the exact same thing if we feel that was original to the home but if that was something that was switched out when there wasn't a historical commission you know they can all be uniform i'm fine with that they were definitely different from the ones on the lower floor in terms mm -hmm. of the, uh, call i think they were in worse condition yes than the ones on the first floor yes and they're too different from each other as well correct So would you be okay with matching the top then? And what did you, what did you think about the lowers? Um, you know, they were all in relatively rough shape. Now whether an expert window restorer would argue that fact and say they could be restored, I can't say, but they were certainly in um, rough shape. Uh, your preference would be re replacing all of them. Is that? It would be. Would you Would you be willing to look at restoration for the bottom ones? I'd have to uh, look into cost mm -hmm. uh, associated with that. Okay. Um, if it wasn't more than. Okay. Um, I'd be willing to entertain that. Okay. If it is more, because this is already an expensive project. Yep. This is an eight to ten thousand dollar project. Yep. Uh, which is one of the reasons we put it off. Yep. As long as we have. <laughs> okay. Um, if it is more than that, then that's getting because. I was in my budgeting sense I was hoping we'd be around five but okay. that's not the case because these are 100% custom windows yeah so if that's something you want us to explore we can uh -huh. I just don't I'm not familiar with any cost parameters on restoration to that degree and I don't know how far off they are and what would be involved um, it, it may be less money um, it's entirely possible do you want to um should we get her um, Linda's contact info and see if um, you know, she could take a look at the bottom? Um, maybe the top, it makes sense to match. Um, you know, it's... What are the windows that are being proposed? Well, so these are um, simulated divided light. Um, it typically will, you know, replace... So what you have on there is true divided light with a storm window, mm -hmm. and usually that's what would replace mm -hmm. 
So you'd replace it with another true divided light window with a storm as opposed to the simulated divided light windows, which are these. Are there any Marvin true divided lights in there? Marvin yeah. makes true divided lights. They that, do. that she was looking at? The, not in that. No, not yeah, they're in here. Sheets, but okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, it's an option. And the, the sample that you have is a simulated or? I honestly don't know because I can't get it out there by myself. <laughs> you brought it in. Wait, so we, oh, no. <laughs> we should probably take a look at it. We should take a look at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those things. Are I got it in the car and out of the car by myself, but I can't, oh. I'm not going to take it out of the bag by myself. <laughs> Well, thank you. This is great. Yeah, that looks simulated. That's a true divide. It's a, yeah. Yeah, this simulated. one's simulated. Yeah. Oh, so it's... Okay, two over one. Clad. Yeah, it should be a wood product. That's what we asked for. Yeah. Not uh, clad or anything like that. No, yeah, this is a remodel yeah. style window. So yeah, it's not, not accurate to the specs we have notated on our application at all. And I'm not opposed to the divided light either. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, we actually have that in the Brasco product that's already in the house. You don't think the uh, the upper were, were original, did you? Yeah, there's a Velcro at the bottom. Yeah, oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so maybe we can do that then. Um, I, you guys weren't there, but... Um, so I would be in favor based on, on yep. Mike's comment to, yep. to replace the top two windows um, um, possibly all five if, if the bottom ones can't be restored um, but I would prefer to you and, and Mike as to uh, what shape the windows were Ronnie you were out there I, I was and um, I, I just had a comment the, the um, the design of the windows in the front seems to be what goes around the, the lower level in the front seems to be what goes throughout the house along the side right. and the back. So right. I think um, my inclination, we don't know how old they are, and I know that's um, being discussed, but I think that they should be allowed to replace what exists um, or if, if they can't be repaired. And I couldn't tell um, the difference between upstairs and downstairs, so I would defer to um, Mike saying that the upstairs windows were in considerable, considerably worse shape. Um, I just, personally, I think that windows are, are extremely important in a home if they're not usable. Um, that's use really. They are not safe. They won't stay up by themselves. Yeah. So I would support the replacement unless the, um, the lower level ones can be repaired uh, at a cost that they, you can tolerate. Ben, Mike, anything else? No. Okay. Um, what does the commission think about um, letting Bree move forward with the with the upper <laughs> replacements? Um, these are six over six over one um, true divided light wood. Um, she can evaluate uh, the other three on the downstairs. Uh, we'll get you a name and number of a contact that come out yeah. and take a look and see if, um, if, see if they can be restored mm -hmm. um, at a cost that's um, amenable to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that's a, that's a first step here, get you going on this. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then if they can't be, what we can do is we can work into a motion that you're gonna restore the bottom. If they can't be, come back. Um, if, they're beyond, if they're beyond repair, mm -hmm. and, we'll, um, and we'll reassess. Okay. Okay. Yep, so just so you are aware, I won't commission the project until I can do all, either all five, whether it's replace and restore or. You can, so what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll, we'll do a motion mm -hmm. that is for the replacement of the top two, mm -hmm. new windows, true divided light wood, and the bottom ones will say that you're going to restore those. 
and if if for some reason you can't mm -hmm. then come back to us that this is not going to work I talked to I talked to Linda this is just this is um, uh, you can't work with these windows and then, okay. and then we'll reassess okay. so you can go forward tonight with this plan if it's for some reason that doesn't work come back to us correct right and then just so you know no I won't do any work one till the spring and two because there'll be cost efficiencies if we're doing all replace yes to do it all at once gotcha the same gotcha people yes understood correct yeah. I get it I'm just letting you know that and we won't start work until we know what the full five yeah. window status is and how we're going to yeah. do it and I think so. you'll probably be able to find out within the next sure. you know, few weeks with the if that can be done or not absolutely and is Linda a local person we've used this I can person give before you that information I can give you that information Bree. Thank you. Um. okay um, voting members one two three four Ben you want to make a motion on this sure okay yeah. I'd like to make a, a motion for a certificate of appropriateness 730 Main Street um, New new windows, new construction windows, second floor uh, facing Main Street to be true divided light, all wood. Uh, six, is this a six over one? Yeah. Yep. Six over one light pattern. Uh, the first floor windows fa facing Main Street and the window facing the driveway on the right hand side to be assessed uh, for repair. Um, and if repair is not possible, uh, we're contacting Andrea to set up another set up another meeting. Good. Um, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank All right. You. Hey, thank you. Happy holidays. Thank thank you too. Too. Thanks for bringing the window in. <coughs> Want some help with that? <laughs> well, yes. It's secure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. All right. Uh, next up, we have 280 North Street. Um, this is for the installation of a of a fence in the front of the property. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Oh, it's been what a year now? A year and a half? A little less. Yeah. You got the windows swapped out? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, we got the window swapped out. We have the barn built. Good. We have the driveway in. Good. All sorts of stuff done. So uh, now I'm just making stuff up so I can come back and visit you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all say. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Um, so we have the uh, we have the application. We have the um, we have the sketch of the uh, the plot plan and the fence type. Um, anything else that um, you'd like to add, uh, John? No, I mean, I think it's, it seems pretty straightforward to me. Yep. Um, I had two questions on it, which were somewhat of just stealing advice from people that know more than I do. Um, one is um, 42 inches or 36 inches on the height. Um, Andrea had said, hey, maybe go with 42 uh, because of the size of the structure. They may like that. Ergo, I put 42 in. I measured all the neighbor's fences uh, this week out of curiosity. Awesome. Creepy late night. <laughs> Good. Um, those are all 36. So the reason I measured them is because my wife kind of said, hey, we don't want to not fit in with the, with the fences around us potentially, mm. but the structure is slightly different as well. So yep. um, I don't care. Yep. I think both would be fine um, and would serve our needs. It's more of a aesthetic. So what do you guys think would look better? in this case um, and then the only other question I had was really on uh, with the driveway you see that I come down uh, the side closest to the house mm -hmm. uh, kind of just closing out that front yard a little bit mm -hmm. um, and the question I had was on that right side where there's kind of little chiclet of a fence do I do a slight turn in just of a couple feet um, does that add a useful aesthetic or do you just leave it as a, a flat plane there I don't have a ton of space to work with mm -hmm. um, but part of me, when I look at it, says, hey, maybe that creates more of an opening into the driveway. It, it, once again, it doesn't matter to me. It's a question for you guys as far as the aesthetic goes. Mm -hmm. Would you even need to do it there? I mean, could you leave that portion of the fence off, that little chiclet, and just do the L? And I think it looks a little weird. I, I kind of looked at it from the outside, and it 
looks a little bit odd. Um, the chiclet's bigger in real life than it looks on that. Um, you know, I think it is, I actually think I have it on my phone. Twenty-one feet. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. I, it's uh, it's a bigger bigger than a chiclet. It looks like a chiclet compared to the other side. Yeah. Um, but it is twenty-one feet. Okay. Ben, is there a, is there a formula for? I'm not height, aware of height, one. ridge height to I'm not fence aware of a or formula, but but being so close to the sidewalk, I would be more inclined to go with something shorter, so it's not uh, it's so intrusive to the sidewalk. Yep. And especially if most of the surrounding properties are that height too. It just yeah. The only the only um, as I was discussing with my wife, my only thought on it that's a slight differentiator, and and I think mentally I may be leaning towards the 36 as well, um, is that if you kind of picture North Street. Um, and you're going out of town towards Weymouth. Mm -hmm. On the right side, right, that house sits up higher than us with its 36 inch fence up on where there actually is a sidewalk with a curb. On our side, the house is, the, the land is sloping down into the house. We're gonna be set back off of the street. So you're probably losing potentially up to a foot from just the street level to where the butt base of it's going to be. And then you're losing whatever a standard curb height is, eight inches, something along those lines. And, and you don't have a sidewalk. No, I did talk to DPW about it um, because one of the things I do want to do at some point is connect in front, which is not my land, um, to that front pathway. So if you look uh, on the straight on shot of my house, there's a walkway up to the front front stairs. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I, want, I said, hey, look, if at some point I wanted to brick from my driveway in front of the fence to connect it to that front walkway, do you guys care? They said no. Um, but I do think that at some point I want some sort of connecting element there. Um, um, how far back are you going to put the fence off the street? It, we're just going to put it on the plot line. So if there were a sidewalk to go in, would there be enough space? Tons. Huh? A lot. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it, it, imagine if you look at the other side of the street, yeah. um, it's very similar probably proportionally. Okay. So there's, there's three feet there? Oh, yeah. I think there's seven. Oh, okay. All right. That's plenty. <clears throat> well, given, given the fact you have no sidewalk and you do have a grade there that, that diminishes as you get closer to the house, the grade drops, and the size of the house, 42 may be, may be the right call. Call, right? It yeah. Is. It does. Um, the flip so side of it is when you're inside the fence. Outside of me, everyone's going to feel very small with the 40. Like that extra six inches does make a difference. Mm. To, and I think that's where my, my wife's questions came from, which was, hey, you, know, you don't want to be <laughs> having a conversation across that walkway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, most of the fences we've, we've approved, you know, front fences have been in the 36 range, you know, it's a, I, I can remember. Um, but it's, uh, I, I can understand why you're, you're thinking about a 42, because this one's also a little bit closer than the ones we typically approve relative to the house. And this is- Closer to the house. Yes. Right, so your angle is steeper. Yeah, yeah. and so you, want, you don't want it to, to um, you know, you want it to be meaningful, but you don't want it to overstate, um, you know, be you know, too much of a fence. Yep, I'm having a hard time with- Yep. It's almost like you need to kind of set them both, set them both up there and just kind of take a look. Um, That's what my wife asked me if we can do. And yeah. I, do you guys, you know, have the ability to say we're good with either one? Can, yeah. can I ask another question? Would, would you ever consider putting up a hedge instead, maybe, just to soften the whole thing? And then put a gate in the middle? Yeah. You would otherwise still have your gate and have a... So I think, okay? I think there's a couple things on that, because it's a really good question. It's one that, that I had thought about. Um, I think the, f the functionality of it, right? So the concept of kids and a dog um, and the timeline of a hedge becoming truly protective, mm, there won't be kids and the dog will be dead, um, right? Okay. That's, at the end of the day, I would prefer at some level to have a, a green hedge. 
I won't be living there when that hedge is, is truly built in, especially with the amount of run that we have. Um, and the fact that, and, and it's once again something I probably need to talk to DPW about, all the street runoff comes onto our property. Most things are going to die up there just because of salt. Yep. Right. It's because it's I'm the just entire asking. Yeah, it's a really good question. It, it, at some level, I would prefer it. I just think from a feasibility and functionality, I would never enjoy it. It would be it would be beautiful years after I left. <laughs> okay. The um, these fences down here. Down, down the road, are these are these thirty sixes? These are the ones you measured. No, I measured. Oh, I, yes, I measured this one. Yeah, that's thirty six. And then I measured this one. And that one's that's a little bit above, but it's thirty six. That one's thirty six as well. Yeah. yeah. That's it. You go thirty six as well. Yeah, because it's gonna be. Yeah. You also don't want to do the jackass with the forty two inch. At <laughs> 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 some, some level, I thought ah, there's also that. Okay. Oh, and just on the return on that other side, what would you what would you do? I'd, personally, I'd leave it the way it is. Leave it the way. You I just have, have a flat straight across. Stop it. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, we were just talking about thirty six versus forty two inch height, and okay. The, the surrounding neighbors are, are at 36s, and even though there's maybe a little bit of variability here with going with a 42 because of the proximity of the house and the size of the house, it, we just we felt that uh, 36 would probably work better in the neighborhood to fit in. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? You want to 17? cover up the house is so beautiful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the more the more you the higher you put the fence, the less you see. Right. right. We do have that. I mean, um, when you look at the front of our house, because of the conservation rules that we had to follow, we do have a large lift before you actually hit house. You've got a lot of yep. concrete there. So. Yeah. Good. I, I'm good. I'd I'd like to. If there's leeway to let someone to decide or the fence site. Give me that. I appreciate that. Sure. Oh, wait, I have to find my pen. Oh, thank you. Set. Almost. <laughs> okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to issue a certificate of appropriateness to 280 North Street for the addition of a white wood cedar fence. Uh, 36 inches high um, with the layout um, per the documents, uh, per the drawing submitted as part of the application. Uh, there will be two gates, one gate uh, in the front of the house uh, centered on the um, front doors and one gate um, side on the driveway side. Okay, uh, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. There you go, thank okay. you. Appreciate it. All right, Cheers. thanks for coming in. Thanks for waiting, too. too. All right, uh, next up we have uh, a late addition. Mr. Al Carney. But not the least. Leastest. <laughs> um, there were some um, modifications to previously approved plans for the Granahan residents at Seven Cottage Street. Yes. Thank you, Hans. Good to see you. Terry uh, was supposed to be here, but he got stuck in some air traffic in New York. And um, so here I am. And um, the construction is well underway, and it looks really quite good. I don't know if anyone's been by the property since it started, but. Um, it's true to the design. It's kind of nice. And the portions of the massing all work quite well. But he wants to, when we sat here last time, he was considering um, enclosing this covered porch that we were creating. And, um, and I think you, Hans, maybe said, why don't you enclose it? And he was like, no, I want it to be open air. This is his remembrance, I think. And it was something like that. But come to find out, now that they're under construction, he wants to enclose it. And so that's what the drawings speak to. Um, 
uh, adding three windows to where there would have been uh, open air. Better usable space up there. Yeah, certainly that. And uh, it, it's difficult to uh, keep those balconies weather tight with scuppers, and it's just it's just a nightmare. So um, I think he realized that as well. He can do it certainly, but it's not easy. And I apologize for my whatever. I'm, I'm a little under the weather. They're um, they're nice to have, but they're also a difficult to maintain. You know, shoveling those things out sometimes. You know, a lot of yeah. snow. Um, you get the runoff off the roof, and yeah. and yeah, and when they fail, they fail horribly. So, and and the exposure here, I mean, in a like nor'easter, um, you know, wind off yeah, the water, all the driven bluff, it's like totally exposed. You want to make it as tight as possible. So, yeah, I think you like the idea of the open air, and yeah. you know, it's kind of romantic. It, it, it yep. just is, but mm -hmm. in reality, it, it's tough. Well, especially since his motivation was to keep the snow off. They know. So this works out. I think it does. <laughs> yes, thank I think I think the concept of enclosing it makes a lot of sense. I think what I'm struggling with here is how the that roof kind of comes and the way it turns the corner here, right to that yeah, that's so in reality. That's you know, done. The inside would turn the corner, but it just sort of. Yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Is there any? I don't know at what stage of construction you're at, but I mean, is there anything else you can do to? It's not as if you see it in reality, in real life. It's 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 not as harsh as it appears on the drawing. It just it it, it doesn't. It works better. It's not it's the true man's side on, on the corner. But it um, is actually not as um, upsetting to the eye as it looks, I think, in that sketch. Or it, you may be imagining it in reality. So you're looking for a similar angle that you see on this side over in here? Close yeah. to it. Right. <coughs> and then you're going to deal with the transition as it butts up against this other wall. But at least it's, you've got that corner. It's all, that's, but that, that's the tricky part of this. We, that was approved the last time. So every, all we're doing is putting a window in the opening that was meant to be open air. So all of the detail and the mansard that doesn't return and the corner board trim, that's, that was approved. Right, but there wasn't a wall there. Right? The, no, there was a return wall. It was just then the rail happened. So there was, there was a, the, the corner did miter with one being angled and one being flat. And then it just returned to the where it met, intersected the, the angle of the mansard, and then it came down, and then the rail interceded that. Now we're taking that plane and just carrying it over to create the window openings. So I get exactly what you're saying, but it's not. It, yeah, it's it, it's different than the totally open air porch because we're re reducing the width of it. But we could infill it with all windows. I don't know. That wouldn't be the right answer either, though. See, I think your eye is distracted when it's open. You're not necessarily paying attention to the fact that the mansard isn't wrapped. Right. That's a good point. I. This drawing here isn't what this pronounced, and I'm just looking at it head on. You know. Head on, it's. Yeah. It's, yeah. But schematic, it's. Yeah. <coughs> but it's that corner, and you know the mansard is kind of curl. Like that. It, I, I agree, but when, when they built it out, and I was concerned about that transition since day one, and it wasn't, it's not, it works, oddly. But does the, um, does the, uh, I guess the, tri the, the triple matches the other. The, the other new triple? Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if maybe you, if you had a, if you could do something similar with the windows over here, maybe you could fool the eye a little bit. I think it's already been built. It's built. This is that opening where we're asking for the windows to be installed where there was a rail. Where it was open. Yeah. Yeah. What's the timeline? Do you want to um, do you want to go out and take a look at it? And go, I mean, go up on the third floor. I mean, take a look from the outside. Well, 
Well, I think it. I mean, we've we've been we've we've done a lot of iterations of this. So I think at this yeah. point we want to make sure we get it right. So I don't. I mean, you just are you sealed off to the weather now or is no? It, it's just an opening. It's but just, it was an open. It was designed as a, a you know, it's it's weather tight with beyond the, the window plane because of that was the, the, the original design. So it's it's not uh, exposed. Is, is that is this a is this a hold up now for the construction process or where? Oh yeah, it's 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 a uh, you know Tyvek and waiting. I think yeah, it's just waiting for windows and then siding. Oh, so you're waiting for windows for other other locations? No, just this oh, one. This one. The other okay. windows. It's all the other addition is completed yeah. yeah so you, you you haven't ordered the windows i can this find out pending, i'm not sure pending, where terry is with the window order pending pending i asked him to slow and get through this before we went and did any more right. which he agreed to he's you know, he's, he's doing the right thing <clears throat> um it's framed out though, right? Uh, is there is there a, a panel there or something you can look at to see how the, the angles will work? It's all there. Um, the wall's in, it's just an opening. Yeah, it's just an opening. It's a window opening, just waiting for windows. Just, I mean, do it, you know, take a peek at it tomorrow or just drive by this week or something or? Yeah, I mean, I can go by there quickly and take a look at it. It's just, it's hard to yeah. envision what this looks like in reality. And, it may not be as awkward as um, it, it isn't, it and I, I know I don't mean to, I don't say that lightly. It just yeah. it isn't as awkward as, as it may appear on the schematic drawings. Any other thing come to mind here that that could could allow you to work this in so so the uh, so the angles are a little bit different. Is there any? Um, I'd have to look at that one. That would be a little bit of a head scratcher. Yeah, but there's a lot going on here in this corner. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I can suggest, um, maybe everybody can drive by. Uh, what's today? Thursday, over the weekend, before before Monday, and just individually send me your your feedback. And then I would propose we could meet briefly, volunteers. All we need are th is three for a quorum, and um, so that this can get done. Yeah, that's a good solution. Mm -hmm. Happy to do that. Okay, um, so uh, let's just uh, and I'll check on everybody's availability. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, creative. Good. <laughs> All right, so that's okay. good. So we'll just to be continued. To be continued, yeah. And Terry would be okay if there's strangers walking on the yeah, property. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you know him, but he's good. <laughs> Yay. Al, is there just like plywood up there right now? Is it just like a face of plywood? It's, no, it's, it's open. It's it's Tyvek and uh, uh, membrane around the you know, the, the uh, outside of the. It's it's it's, it's as if we can the see roof the is on the siding's on the van side side everything's really done except for this one plane. So we can okay. So we can't. We're not going to be able to see this plane in the drawing. We're not going to be able to. You'll see, you see exactly that except there won't be a window in it. Okay. Could you um, could you just kind of uh, rough out a window? Just kind of mark it's it there. Out? Okay. So it's, he's gone as far as to rough it out. Oh, okay, so okay. there's it's like a, a marker or something we could kind of just yeah, it's just look up and yeah. see how the window is going to fit. In he there. went yeah, probably went a little bit further than he may have you know. Okay, I got so. you. But I'm not yeah. I'll have to check the old drawings based on what he did, but it's okay. interpretation. Okay. But yeah. Um, so I, I I think um I think we're gonna have to walk back here because we're you're not gonna be able to see that much in the road down three A. You can if you go and st and if you go over to the um, bathing, beach. bathing beach parking lot. Just park right in front of the iron horse, and then you can. Yeah. Or you, or you can go view. in the backyard. He won't. He won't mind. Okay. Yeah. I think if we could just. I think that's a, a ways away over there. You think we'd mind? I don't know. I just said. No, that. I don't mean to say that. Yeah. If, if you could ask him. That'd yeah. Be great. I'll, I'll. I'll reach out to him tonight to tell him what's going on. Okay. And I'll just say that the members will be coming by um, over the course of the next few days. Um, yeah. And then. Yeah. And then on. Over the weekend, you can just send me an email, um, just just to me alone, and that way, because we can't, it, it'll be a violation of the open meeting law if we copy everybody. 
right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Feel better. You can go home now. No, not done yet. <laughs> not, yet. <laughs> not yet. Not done yet. Right. Almost there. Yeah, we'll go and uh, have a hot toddy. Nice. <laughs> I don't think you need anything. Okay. Um, Andrea was kind enough to get some minutes out to us this week. Yeah, whoopee. Day before. Just in time. Any um, any comments, changes to the minutes? I did have some. Okay. You want a pen? No, I can just give it to you if you like. Just a couple of things. Okay, thank you. Under 240 Main. Yes. One, two, three, four, fifth line down. Uh, terrace adjoining the pool house will be too close to the property. I think you meant line, property line. Yes. Add in line. Sure. Okay. Um, when uh, the third from the bottom, Commissioners Burnham and Kindler agreed that the cupola is too dressy for the outbuilding. I did as well. Oh, okay. All right. And then um, page three, 17 miles road. 17 miles. Okay, got it. The third line down, the vendor's information calls out PVC trim. Is that, is that a it's phrase? A term. Okay, because I would have said calls four, but that was, okay. Yeah. But I'm still learning. That's all right, but thank you. That's okay. great. Anything else? And then the last page, um, the the name of the um, tenant from 27 Station Road. I don't know if we have. Oh wait a minute. That. Oh yes. Um, um, I didn't write it down. I went looked. At I. Notes. Hans, it's Donna. What's yeah, Donna's got, last name? Yeah, I got it. I'll get it to you. Okay. Okay, good. And then the last thing, the the meeting adjourned at 10:40. Did it really? Were we that late that night? I think we're. Pretty... I don't know if it matters. Yeah, I think we were because that was the Station Street, and there oh, was okay. some discussion in the audience certainly that that, that was. Yeah, we, we had a spectator. You were. Yeah, it was that late. Okay, good. I thought it might have been a typo that it should have been 9:40. So, yeah. and only if someone would have challenged what went on later, and you know, if there's something wrong in it, not that it's a big issue. That's it. Okay, and I, yeah, I, I have one oh, on okay, 34 sorry. on 34 Main Street. 34. Uh, yes, I have it. Three three lines down where um, Virginia recuses herself. Mm -hmm. It was both me and Virginia. Oh, you're right. Yep. So that was the only one. Oh, sorry. That's it. Okay. Um, 69 North Street. Architect Gabriel Lordy. Mm-hmm. That was his builder? That's his architect. It was, okay. Yeah, that's his, uh, I took it off the application. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I think you're right. It was his builder. He's not an architect. Well, not, no, not in the sense that Michael yep. was. Um, so it's his but I builder. Thought he, I thought he was the contractor. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Thank you for that. Brilliant. See? All of us get it right. <laughs> Appreciate that. Anything else? We have changes? Okay. I have one thing to just pass around. I Let's, um, I'll just take a vote on the minutes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Preempting. Sorry. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from uh, October 19, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, this was supplied to us. We had a meeting um, yeah. with the, um, the solar panel. Uh, representatives and also um, someone from the MBTA. So this is what they handed out. They were required, as you recall, by the Mass Historical Commission to 
um, do an improved line of sight. Oh, here's the, so we can just pass these around. Mm -hmm. So the, I guess where we're at right now is um, in January, Tom Mayo, our interim town manager, will be meeting with someone from the MBTA and um, discussing this and some other, um, there have been some concerns from uh, abutters to the rail, to the right of way. Uh, the, the fence is not, uh, there's some problems with the fence in terms of it, you know, falling down in some locations and it just needs maintenance. Um, and also just the general maintenance along the tracks. Um, if you look, the weeds are usually pretty high and so there, the original agreement was that they would maintain the right of way. So that's going to be addressed. And also some residents have had issues with, um, vibrations. So, uh, along along north street and uh the feeling is that didn't used to be that way um in the first years this when the train started in 2007 vibration wise vibration wise but now people are noticing cracks so um the thought is perhaps you know they have the mats underneath the rail that are to reduce vibration. And so perhaps the mats need to be replaced. Um, How many years has it been? 2007. So I don't know what the life expectancy of the anti-vibration mats is, but it's been 10 years. So um, the other issue is some of the residents feel that the train is going faster than it originally did, which exacerbates the vibrations. So those are the things that will be discussed. This drawing looks a little bit different than what was originally proposed. I didn't. I don't remember this being all one piece. I thought it was a, a segmented. They they are, but they're very close together. So that's their. The, so it's not one piece. It's no, it's not one whole piece. What, was there? They're a, linked. I thought they were going to do two long runs. Um, yeah, but there's it was really segmented. Yeah. Was there an installation in Westboro? Was that? No. Let me think of where it was. Um, yeah, I thought it was Westboro. Yeah, maybe it was Westboro. Okay. I'm sorry. But um, actually, we're the first to get something like this. Oh. That's right. That's yes. Similar concerns. Uh huh. So, what's interesting is that um, I was talking to my other commission, the historical commission, uh, of course, about this as well, and one of the members um, said that um, Tesla has the um, technology to make tiles, s small tiles to be that would that replaces installations like this so oh. the tiles could be placed right on top of the existing, existing. platform mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a, it's a roofing material it is yeah. yeah so I don't know if they'd be amenable to that just coincidentally I had asked the guy I said why can't you put these panels on top of the um, you know the existing on the station platform so he said he'd check into that but then she came up with this other technology that's available yeah and I'm sure they could put something on that roof it's just a matter of whether it's going to give them enough the kilowatt hour the kilowatts that they'd they want. probably want to do that in addition right. to the yeah. panels yeah. they're talking about interesting so we'll find out and there will be a public meeting to discuss this and it'll be their meeting but it will be held here and so there will be um something will be approved 
um, a date will be approved and, and I'll send that all out. So, okay. Anybody else have anything? Um, six Station Street. Oh, um, I don't think we can talk about that, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. All right. Um, and actually, I, uh, I'm sorry I missed the site visits on Saturday. I didn't have a, I'm not sure I knew where. Did you not get the email? I was looking. I looked through my email like crazy. For All right, Justin, I'm going to look. I saw an email that said, if you're not, and I forget who's. If you're not Ben or Virginia. You're expected. Yes. And so I figured, I was, and then I went to look to see where should I be when and could not find it. So, and, and, I, and I usually. I'm good at looking at your emails is like but I, uh, I couldn't find it either but it's on the website it, oh it was I didn't know to look I there found it on the website and that was okay and I was sorry. about to say is there another way I could have found out and, yeah uh, sorry because I have to post the site visits okay I didn't realize now you know but now you didn't know. before it sounded like they were not good visits next time next time I apologize, Justin. This. You sent a little um, uh, agenda, which I missed when I asked you to, to remind me where it oh, was. Oh, now I but wonder. It didn't seem to come up the first email, but it came up when I looked back and I found it afterwards. Okay, well, at least I sent it. <laughs> so and I couldn't I'll find try it the first time either. It was very I'll try and do it in bold or capitals or something. No, I, think it's, I think it's the fault of the Ethernet. I think it has nothing to do with you, Andrew. Thank you. I, I, I have one thing. Um, so I just wanted to um, to let you all know that I got some really positive response to the letter that you sent out. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, great. So um, people have been very responsive oh, and, um, and very appreciative of the letter going out. Oh, that's so, really yep. nice. So, so um, the, only, the, only <laughs> the only mistake I made was did I put my home number? as the place to call oh, you did. i did <laughs> and, i mean i haven't used that well, number or given that number to anybody and for the team no, i know is. so but fortunately um Bring it off the hook. with the exception of one call um, most people have known to call the office so oh <laughs> we didn't catch that one stupid <laughs> anyway Okay, but thank you. That's nice to know because um, it was, uh, that'll be, that's good. That was an yeah, thanks, Andrew. It was a great work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, uh, any, any uh, comments? Nope. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting for this evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, you very much. Adjourned at 9 o'clock. Here we go. Right. I think make it's a note. good to do that. <laughs>